them, but we do have a relationship with their school. Excellent. Excellent. That's good. So, um, where should we start here? Where would you like to um, start? Here's, let me go through, I guess, what I understand. Yep. You can tell me whether I'm right or wrong and maybe flesh out the details that I need to figure out next steps. Yep. Um, first of all, thanks for I mean, bringing this opportunity to us. It sounds pretty interesting. Um, yeah. I've never heard of a program quite like it. So, um, uh, so we, um, so the logistics of the, of this program would be June 22nd to July 2nd. Yeah. Uh, be run through three or four schools. Uh, this is, I think the first time that you've done it specifically in a school environment. It's been done generally as like an adult yeah. training. That's um, correct. We're, currently we're actually lining up some, we might actually have a school event coming up in, in March or April, actually also in Seattle, which is the, it's called the Friday Harbor School. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, so we're we're talking about that. But this is um, something we've been doing th these kinds of programs for a long time. We're going specifically for the schools and just general collaborative literacy design training, all this the technical skills, not only for high school students but for everybody because we see that as a general need for people, say say older people who don't have any such skills and want to get get them. Yep. Yeah. Um, I can't agree more. I, I wrote, my, where I come from, my background is my coworker and I run a robotics team here. So yeah. we circulate in a pretty high tech environment here. There's um, about 50, 40 teams that have you know a few thousand kids in it, 15,000 students compete in it. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty high, high end industrial you know, design and engineering. So we have a lot of contacts in that world and we spend a lot of time, you know, doing machining and 3D design and, you know, um, uh, innovation uh, iteration that sort of thing so we myself and my colleague do, do quite a bit of that um, and we believe in it as a school we have a lot of students you know we have 46 students in our robotics program that are essentially is that to first mill and build. first sorry yeah first okay, That's okay. Right. Yep. yeah um, so yeah we're pretty heavily involved in that and have been for over t like 10 years so um, Anyway, we have a, my point is, is we have a population that really uh, likes this kind of stuff, uh, yeah. adults and kids alike. Yeah. Um, so uh, the dates in the in June, um, it's nine days long. Yep. Uh, you would need a large assembly area that would hold up to twenty four people. Something like lab tables, probably just hand tools. Nothing. We don't need to pull out the the cutting cutting torches or, no. or, or drill drill press or anything like that. Um, so those are kind of the logistical things. I think the piece that was in um, that Bob just kind of mentioned he would talk to you about was things like registration timeline and management, yep. like who manages that. Um, insurance, we got to talk through an insurance process. Um, cost, I mean, the cost he outlined was that um, for you, it's $1,500 per person. And then on top of that, sounds like uh, Bob and that group is actually putting a, a, a premium on top of that for their school. Um, uh, fifteen hundred for so revenue share of fifty fifty on the fifteen hundred. There's also a five hundred dollar. So the 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 figure that Bob and I talked about was two thousand, and then fifteen hundred is tuition. About five hundred of that goes to materials themselves. Yep. But so that fi that the reason it's two thousand instead of fifteen hundred is that they're taking that profit or that profit going to you. Uh, so from the fifteen hundred, uh after we cover costs, any other costs that might be involved, like my travel, for example, or, or the instructor's travel, that there's a 50-50 revenue share from whatever's left. Yeah. So it's... A, of, it's a, of, of the 1,500. That's, that's correct. Yeah. Um, so why... Okay. I just did the, the difference between the 1,500 figure and the 2,000 figure is not totally clear to me. Um, it so was my understanding that... that bought, yeah. yeah. So we're charging fifteen hundred tuition and five hundred in, in materials. I see. So the so the I see the, the materials is on top of the fifteen hundred. Yeah. Okay. That was that was not clear to me. Okay, I get that. Um, what do you think about this price structure? Is that something that the school can afford or students can afford? Um. I mean, 2000 starts to put, I see 1500 as, I mean, that's what, when I heard it, that's what I was kind of thinking as the base cost. Um, I, I, 
I even said this on my my conference call with Bob. I said that seems reasonable. I mean, if you think of the payoff in terms of what nine days, eight hours, you're looking at you know, what, you're eighty almost eighty hours of work. Like that's a that's a pretty hefty summer camp. Um, yeah. So especially with the takeaways and with the skill building, you know, I think it's high. I think our school, not to get into too much of the details, but like we would probably. My school would probably pay about ten thousand dollars just for some faculty to take it. I mean, free to them as a professional development. So our school would probably be willing just to put five faculty in there right away. Um, in terms of students at that price point, um, yeah, I mean, I think we'd put in. We'd probably get some, uh, depending on the timeline, as long as we get it, you know, the registration kind of going soonish, so that people don't leave town. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I I would expect that we would get. 12 people from our just directly from our community pretty fast in terms of that that's my guess mm-hmm. um it is a little high but again if you think if it's if it's if it's if it's advertised well and put forth as to what the takeaways are and what the, the really benefits are I, I mean it seems to me that it's, it does uh, have that value that's my two cents yep um yeah. And you said so you would put in ten thousand dollars worth into that. So you'd put in five five teachers for professional development purposes. Yeah, yep. I think that's that's what my head. Of, we, I think we're, that's kind of our price in terms of putting in an investment to the pro- program. Yeah. Yep. And the um, goal would and, be: Are you guys interested in that? You can then carry on the steam camps yourselves at another time, or would you want to work with us? The idea is that. We generate a community of people that are that are literate in the collaboration skills, so that we're doing this as a mu- basically turning this into a global classroom, where we collaborate on real design with many other locations at the same time, and um, hopefully we can collaborate on that in, in terms of developing the curriculum and other projects. As we start with certain projects, there like the the Raspberry Pi tablet, for example, but you can apply this to anything like say an electric vehicle or whatever, and and everything builds upon former work because we have methods to document everything and do modular design so uh, but but how do you feel about uh, your the future in this would you, would you see your teachers running this camp or would you want OSC to come in and run the camps in the future and stuff like that or uh, I think we we would I would be very interested in running it perpetually you know in you know whatever that structure might look like in some variation whether it's summer or whether it's I don't know exactly know but yeah mm-hmm. we would have a high, a high interest in that in the in propagating that more um, again a it helps us it's it, it's it feeds us into our robotics program which we have you know like I said we're, we're, that is only a growing environment also we have a lot of teachers that are doing more and more like CAD three dimensional modeling. Um, you know, design, design and we have, you know, we have seven 3d printers on campus here. Mm-hmm. So we you, like, but we have teachers that don't know how to use them, you know, and mm-hmm. um, like the cat, the CAD training in this program is a very of high interest for me mm-hmm. just because I'm trying to, I'm trying to create a pipeline to train five to 10 kids a year in CAD so that they can learn it through high school and become really proficient by the time they're seniors. Mm-hmm. Um, so just on like, that's just one specific point. But um, we also have like, classes here, um, computer science classes, essentially, mm-hmm. that are built around Raspberry Pi development, um, you know, and Arduino use. So we have those in our classes already. So the more in, the more um, training we can provide to A, adults, and B, children would be great. And um, if, if we were able to, to keep that going, I, I'm all in. So I think that's great. Yeah. Would you see your your teachers picking up the skills to actually produce the kids eventually themselves, or would you see a, yourself in a relationship where we provide the kid and and the training as well? I'm not sure. I I don't sure I understand enough about it to, tell, to yeah. be honest with you. In terms there is of that. Some... I mean, to, the, the kits sound like they are very innovative, and it's something you put together. Yeah. I don't know how comp. I mean, I can maybe imagine how complicated they are, or how simple, or but I don't have that in my head. The question. So, the relevant question would be, can you see a, a teacher who's got that high level of interest that they want to start making, uh, doing the printers themselves or make it part of other classes where they prepare the kids, the kits, or are interested in an entrepreneurial aspect where if they learn how to build the kits themselves, and you can also talk about developing, I mean, we do everything op- as open source enterprise, so we develop open source plans for the machines, but also open source enterprise plans 
how do you actually make a living out of say a 3d printer business and so forth everything pretty much is cumulative it's very much modular scalable in design so there's a lot of derivatives that can come out for practical projects and then the outcome like one of the things that we will do that we encourage everybody to collaborate on is the incentive challenge that we will run on a on a 3d printed professional grade cordless drill that'll be a challenge that we're going to launch september 2nd and your people will be uh, qualified or trained to to jump right into that but that'll be like a two hundred fifty thousand dollar reward and a six month development process <laughs> where we're, we're literally saying this is a $10 billion market. Uh, we're going to capture within three years, we're going to capture more than 50% of it using open source tools and collaboration. Simply saying that, hey, uh, when we work together, we can get better results, and th which is already proven in software. And we're trying to do the same for hardware. I That sounds extremely exciting. I think that we, like we have, for, as part of our program here, we have a like I said, computer science courses, but we also have an entrepreneurship and design course, which yeah. we're, where students are really encouraged to do those sort of self-starting systems. So that, yeah. If, yeah, I mean, and I don't know, I'm just kind of dreaming big here. Like if we had, I mean, we have the teachers, but if we had more tools to facilitate that, especially the more realistic, the better kids love that. I can see that really being a, that'd be, okay. especially the time, the timing September 2nd is great. That's the beginning of school, right? Yeah. Like, that's that's a really good timing for us. If it starts in July, it's not so good. So the timing of that sort of um, uh, okay like competition would be great. Yeah. So as far as uh, what you know, let us know, because we're developing all this kind of material, like curriculum and the tools, the real practical skills where you go immediately from idea, just like you see in the promotional video. I mean, that's quite real. You go from idea to prototyping and iterating and collaborating as a large team. Uh, so we have the tools, the actual tools that get you to the physical reality. But as far as integrating, like, say, other groups um, around enterprise and everything else, are, would you be interested in doing, would there be any interest in starting an OSC club where we, it's, it would be like what I envisioned there, what I'd like to see is, uh, is an alternative to literally like first robotics. My critique of that is, is that, okay, that still gets us, unfortunately, like most of the kids that go into that end up working for military companies. I mean, I, I kind of went to a first event and that's, okay, we gotta be talking about um, benefit for the common good. So we're trying to shift that conversation to to uh, technology that matters and stuff. But would, would you guys be interested in starting a club where, where you take on uh, just, just like first, but you're moving towards a somewhat of a different goal? Yeah, I mean, we're, um, we utilize first mostly because it's a built out structure that yeah. we have, have been, I mean, we plugged into it with, you know, four kids 10 years ago, and we've been on that train for a long time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and not to say it's easy, but it's, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a built out structure. We also, yeah. can, it, also can, like, we also participate in like mate robotics, the underwater robotics, which is a very different structure. Hmm. Um, uh, What's it called? But, uh, mate M A T E. It's a um, it's it's an acronym. I can't remember. Uh -huh, but it's, mate um, Robotics. Yeah, Mate Robotics, and that's actually even done with universities. So like high, like engineering university students you, um, are participate in that program as well. Oh, that's um, both high school and university level. Mm -hmm. And even okay. middle school. It's a really broad um, competition, hmm. and it's very it's much more of a real world challenge. It's not a competition like first. It's not. Mm -hmm battle bots or whatever so mm -hmm. um yeah i mean we say yes to a lot of things i mean that's that sort of club or that sort of environment is something we would let, love to learn about because it, it definitely falls in line with our mission um mm -hmm. you know we um again around our entrepreneurship stuff around our our you know our large community service work that we do mm -hmm. a lot out of our and a highly technical city like seattle mm -hmm. um you know, you won't see a lot of our kids going into military. I mean, that's just kind of the way also of independent schools. But so, you, you know, you will not very, will not. Mm -hmm. um, so um, anyway, so, yes, I mean, those things, all they all they do is interest me more. And I think we have a population that is very prone to be to participate in those sorts of events. Yeah. It's just a matter of usually for us, it's a matter of training. How much time does it take? What are the resources available? What's the support we can give teachers? And, you know, um, how do we communicate it? Like, how do we message that? But those are things we're good at. I mean, we can handle those things. And, you know, with your, with the, the materials and resources you have, we could, I think it could work. Mm -hmm. 
So as far as the support that we can provide to teachers, so it sounds like uh, for us it would be important to, for us to generate lesson plans and curriculum that that you guys could use. If are people, I mean, is that a need for you guys, or how do you? I mean, I'm I'm just trying to get a picture of this. So say we're offering the the steam camps. Um, I'm trying to explore how how we can. Uh, well, with the OSC clubs and, and getting this into classrooms, the idea there is, so say the five five teachers that you're going to put into this, are they in a position, for example, to take one of their technical classes or anything that's related to design enterprise and also convert that, coordinate with other schools, just like, so we're going to coordinate during the, the STEAM camp, but co coordinate during class, so we're doing global design projects. I mean, is that, I'm just trying to figure out how to do that. Yeah. I mean, the how is the big one, right? Like, I mean, that's, I mean, mm -hmm. we don't, again, it's something we certainly could facilitate how that plays out if depends on. So, I mean, the two different structures that I'm hearing is like, there's this kind of club structure where st students are kind of like a, like a robotics team, right? They're yeah. voluntary. The yeah. kids, you know, it's maybe outside of class time. It's like the kids are only involved in the way versus what we have is part of our curriculum, which is, you know, these kind of, which, I don't. I think this does still fall in line with those those ideas, mm -hmm. but um, how that would work would be um, uh, it'd be you know like I'm not sure how it would play out, but I think we would it would certainly be something we would be w willing to look into because we're only building more of these opportunities. Like this is not a secondary like like thing that we've kind of done figured out and we're done with it and we're never going to change it. Like we're in this moment of changing, developing updating those sorts of ideas in classrooms and curriculum. Um, like we're at the beginning of that process and anything that would kind of feed into that and seem to work well with our community, like that's great. Um, uh, in terms of like collaborating with other schools, you know, usually that just comes down to logistics. You know, like, yes, that sounds great. Of course we'd love, you know, we love collaborative environments. We love sharing ideas across, you know, state lines or country lines and all that stuff. It's just a matter of like how does it how does it facilitate day in and day out in a school environment, and we've crossed those bridges before. But you know those are the questions that would come up. Right. Okay. Yeah. So do you have more than five teachers? Because actually, like the way we're doing it with the Seattle, not with the Bob's place, he's paying. So f there's 500 in materials, and then he's subsidizing his teachers. So he's not. He's paying 1250. Per teacher, so that actually means you can handle. If you have a budget of ten thousand, you can get eight teachers in there. So, I think I could fill as many spots for teachers. I could ease. I could fill as many spots as we pay yeah. for. I think. Probably I mean, and, what we and this was do. sent to. This was sent to me by my head head of school. Like he's really supportive of this. Yeah. If we ha if we had a large scale interest, I mean, I think, and then I mean, I'm kind of thinking this in circles. Like if I have, you know, let's say five to seven teachers, then I have five to ten students. And then I have, you know, in my other parts of my community, like we have, like this spirals pretty fast into a, a large number. Of, I mean, Bob said there's a max of 24. I would be surprised if we didn't get close to that number within the community. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And are you open to just the other thing is when we run the event, are we able to open it to the public as well? So that there's people from the community or elsewhere that want to sign up. That's OK with you? Yeah, I would just ask that we kind of get first shot on it so that yeah, we can yeah. make sure that we cover it. But yeah, that's perfectly yeah, fine. Matter of fact, I, and and when and open to the community. I mean, I would, I don't know if you if you care about this, but I would first like to look at, you know, like I said, we have a large group of engineers and roboticists that we work with pretty regularly, like pulling them into it. We work with a lot of teams and schools around the area, and um, and a, we also have a network yeah. of schools that we would like to maybe invite as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean. Um. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah. So yeah. that's good. Do we want to set like a? How would it work for the registration? Once we, when would you like to post this? When are you ready to post? Because we can work on that like in the near future. Like, get it up. Yeah, in the that's next a couple of weeks or something. That's a great question. Um, I I feel like that's the the most burning question because time yeah. is of the essence here, yeah. being at the end of February. Yeah. Um. So I would. I think Bob's timeline was to start to release this out to his community. Say, like, I think it's in the next two weeks. Is yeah, what I think I remember. Um, yeah, I have it probably written down here somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, 
Ours would probably be, I'm just looking at my calendar. We wouldn't do anything until probably the week of March 16th. Okay. Um, but my question on that is, what is, I mean, we're happy to, ma- to manage registration. Um, and what I need to kind of wrap my brain around is like, what's the communication look like around that? Like, and I'm really thinking about what's the advertising, right? Like, what's the, I mean, I see your website, but, you know, what are, do you want, do you want us to create promotional materials for it and try to? Absolutely. To, to, you know, like, yeah. I mean, so we want to fill the workshop, right? So we have the announcement on our side, but if you put it on yours, you already have audiences. So you should probably send it out to all your audiences and the other schools you collaborate with. So uh, I guess, are you able to, um, like, can you, for example, just logist- like mechanically speaking, can you embed our reg- it would be nice if we can get the registration on our side. I mean, we wanted to put the registration on our side, and the way we're going to work it with Bob is they're going to put it on their side, but we'll also put it on ours so that, but they have the first priority, like we'll wait a little bit until uh, everyone from their side is, is happy. Um, do, what, what do you see that happening as? Do you, do you guys have a, you have a platform where people register and all that? Uh, more or less. I mean, we yeah, we would we would push things internally to our faculty, just kind of probably more informally. Um, we would probably announce this at our faculty meeting on March 9th, is my guess. And mm-hmm. then I would open it up to students. The reason that we wait till then, because we have final exams, we're just kind of in a crazy time of period right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would probably open that up to my students somewhere in that mid-March timeline. You have uh, final exams like happen- right, happening right now? Uh, they're next week. Okay. Uh, right? I don't even know what the date is. What are we? Yeah, next week. Okay. And then it's going to take us some time to get this off the ground because we don't have, you know, we're kind of trying to we have to just work on making sure we do it right. Yeah. So probably not until that March 16th timeline would we be able to open it up to our students. Right. Um, just because it's a busy time of year. Yeah. Um, and in the meantime, and then, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, and then I was, th- you know, if we do like a two week registration period, I mean, let's, you know, we call it April 1st, we could say like, Hey, we're done. Like we're done on our side. Mm-hmm. Um, that would, I think that would probably be a reasonable timeline to then hand off that registration point to you. And and as long as we get enough, I mean, all we really need to make it really um, workable for us is to get, you know, five to 10 part people in our community. And then we're still welcome, uh, happy to host and manage, you know, uh, facilitate uh, on our campus, the camp, regardless of, you know, if there's other outside people. Yeah. Um, as far as the, the advertising, so that would be pretty much internal emails or, uh, just, just your email um, I lists, would, right? Or... N- no, what I'd like to do is, um, I'd like to make, um, a, what I have is I'd probably have one of my students start to mock up an advertisement flyers, yeah. um, something digital that we would send out first to faculty, then to, we'd post it on our website and we have an internal website that we would post it to. So it would only be accessible to families. Um, we would send out then a, an email pointing to that website for, for our summer camps, because we have other summer camps we're doing. Can and you we're send, a send out a, in a chat box right now? To, to your for summer our summer camps? program? Yeah. Um, I don't know if they're open to the, I don't know. Let me look. Hold on. I haven't seen it this year, but. Uh-huh. So um, the yeah. summer programs are primarily targeted at the students, not, not community. Yeah. Our, our, we don't, we don't have a ton of summer programs. I mean, I'll, okay. be, I mean, I'll look them up and see what we even have on the website. Okay. I don't, we don't run, I don't know, how many summer programs do you think we run here? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're only running like three to six camps here. So we don't do, a, like, we don't have a summer school. Like, we don't have a ton of stuff going on here. Um, but let me see if I have. We also just changed our website last year, so some things aren't on it. Summer program. Here, I found something. Here we go. Uh, chat box. Where's the chat box? Oh, Bottom there's... left. Yep, got it. Redshift Robotics, that's different than the other thing, than, than Mate. Yeah, the Redshift Robotics is the first. That's our first. Web, that's our first robotics. Oh, that's oh, okay. Um, that's first, okay. That's yeah. That's our. That's the team I I, I run. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, the mate the mate team doesn't have a 
a, a huge presence. It's a pretty small group of, of students that work on that. It's growing, yeah. but it's it's still relatively small. Mm -hmm. um, and then we use and then we do uh, some more robotics programs in our middle school that wouldn't be, you know, public or anything like that. But we do after school robotics and and we do lots of after school programs with students like, you know, three D maker maker space, um, you know robotics engineering just kind of coding you know that sort of stuff we do that after school a lot with old middle schoolers a lot mm -hmm. and actually we need we actually need more of those like they they're, 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 our community is like we want more and more and more we just don't have this you know we're trying to find the staff that are both willing and prepared to do so, mm -hmm. so. okay um so i had a question oh um could um so we need to get, so I guess, I mean, just kind of thinking about insurance. So we also kind of problem um, for my um, operations people. We need to start having kind of a, a document of kind of like documenting what we're, what we're kind of setting up here in terms of like timeline, cost. Um, you know, we really need a contract, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. what we need to start building out is, yeah. I don't know if you have one that you've used in the past in terms of what, uh, how, like, when are we going to, you know, are we going to collect the money um, yeah. of our community and then pass it along to you? Or are you going to collect them? You know, yeah. so we probably need so to maybe, start getting that. Maybe I can send you a draft of that and then we can That'd be fill great. out. Yeah, so send, let's send you a draft. Um, and we can start talking about what the publicity looks like. So, so you would take our copy that we have, you'd make a flyer and also like the kind of long description or would you just refer to our website for the description? Like you just, I'd like to use your website. Your website's yeah. great. Okay. So what I will do yeah. is uh, then work on getting the draft of that. I can share that draft with you for the updated one, like th the one that talks about the, the June event. And then you can uh, get your people doing the, the flyer. If you have the flyer, yeah, I mean, I'd love to also post it on our social media. and I'll, I'll send it all along to you for sure. Yeah, okay, so a flyer that you guys get and a link. Um, um, the other thing that I would, um, my... Um, colleagues were asking for us do you think just because we're we're walking into this at a pretty fast pace and it's a it's kind of a big commitment do you think you could send along a uh, a connection that you where you've done this before that we could talk to someone that's somewhere someone that's you know been a part of this program before or okay. an organization you've worked at if it's friday harbor we know the friday harbor school um oh yeah we, you know. yeah we'll see uh, we're talking to them there uh, i can we did um a bill that now, so the the Steam Camp program, the first one was January, where it was with individuals um, that mm -hmm. we kind of put their testimonials up. But are you saying so? Are you saying like some individuals from the the last event that participated, or sure? I just I would I would like to talk with somebody that's actually done it, if that's possible. Okay. Or you know, you could ask if it's okay to have me contact them. I just like to talk because I want to just understand. Um, I want to understand this from maybe more than one point of view. Okay. I mean, that's kind of what I'm like. If that's possible, that'd be great. Uh, so that I, because we're going to have to do this all pretty fast, and I want to make okay. sure I kind of have as much information as I can. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Um, and, oh, yes, and insurance, of course. I don't know how we're going to deal with the insurance permission forms. I'm assuming we're going to have to go through some forms for our community. For people that join, our school is probably going to have to have some releases as part of that. Uh, as our facility, and then um, I'm sure that you know you. I'm not sure how what your yeah. insurance well, piece is, and I have a person that manages that here that I can. I'll have to engage with. What we have is um, a liability release and a testimonial release form okay. that we have people sign. Um, what do you do? You have any requirements from us regarding liability insurance, or I, I will ask. Um, it will probably be. We'll probably have everyone sign a release, so probably for individuals. In mm -hmm. terms of your release, I think we're, we're, I think that will be more of on the financial contract side, in terms of payment and uh, use of use of the facility. Like we usually do a, a facilities agreement for using our, you know, just so you understand, you know, understand the, you know, I'm not sure what it looks like. I've never done it, but uh, we rent out our facility not infrequently, so um, I'll have to I'll have to follow up with my operations people and see what that looks like and. Um, it's usually not very onerous. We don't have, you know, this isn't a massive, you know, public, yeah. you know, uh, public yeah. government form thing, but I'll find more details on that. Yep. 
Um, and um, yeah, I mean, some other details that I learned from Bob is just like it's some you need to you know the registration you're going to need to be closed relatively early you know early before the the camp starts so that you can ship out your materials. Yep. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, any other details that maybe I should know that I'm not asking about? Um, not sure. So, so the the kits are self-contained. We collaborate with other locations. Um, that's that's the main parts that I can think of right now. Um, okay. The logistics of kit shipping, as long as we're in time to close the registration, like say like four weeks ahead of time, then we you know comfortably ship that stuff. So you you receive it like two weeks ahead of time, and it'll all be quality controlled parts, so it all should work. And then when one of us arrives, um, then there we would want to coordinate that with our instructor that. You know, I guess we got just got the only thing is make sure all the materials are on site for the event. And then just yeah. the other part is that we'd like to see can you bring any do you have any people in in film so that we can actually document some of this? Can you bring in students even if it's just uh students that participate as volunteers who are doing documentation work like video and stuff like that? I mean, we have a pretty big film we have a pretty big group of students that do that sort of thing. Uh -huh. We have also a mark. We also have a marketing group of, uh, you know, our adults marketing. Um, so we have the, the trick is going to be a little bit about timing because that's the end schools over at that uh -huh. point. So students aren't, I mean, we can ask them to be there um, mm -hmm. as far as documentation, but I know our marketing people will want to be there. We also do actually sometimes in, in important times, we actually hire out to a filming crew that comes and films things that happen at school. Um, and we could, and he usually comes and gathers, um, um, you know, mm -hmm. professional professional video videographers. Yeah, and that happens occasionally, but we do pay we do pay for that outside. That's from outside an outside company. Okay, so. were you guys? I mean, I would encourage, like, say we're gonna run this in the future to get get a nice promo video. I mean, that's what that's our interest. Um, as well, so that if we can invite students or perhaps son of, send one of our people there uh, to to do the video, uh, that would be great. But the question is, so so would you would you plan on or can you plan on getting the the film crew out there for for your purposes, or that's kind of like I'm, ancillary? Once, once I once I get the contract and stuff from yeah. or the template from you, yeah, I'm gonna have to sit down with my operations group, my marketing group, yeah, and. Um, and just some administration just to make yep. sure that everyone's on board. If they have any questions that I'm not asking or other things, okay. at that point, I can say, I mean, I can ask about that. I think they're going to, um, I don't know. I don't know what the possibility is. I do know that regardless, our marketing group, which is, you know, they're not professional videographers, but they document, we have over a thousand students with, we have stuff going on here all the time that we're, mm -hmm. we're documenting. So I know that our marketing group would be very interested in that in yeah. terms of that. But I don't know how they usually decide when to use our videographers or not. That's just not something I've ever seen. So I can in that meeting I will bring it up. Yeah, yeah, see see what we can do there cuz we definitely want to do this. We're we're developing or I mean we're just scaling this program up right now. We're training additional teachers. We we just produced a video to recruit instructors. Actually, I'll I'll, I'll send it to you. Let me make a note of that. That'd be great. Because, Anything you, I, yeah. I know very. I've looked through the website, but anything you're willing to send me, I'm. I want to pile through because I'm really curious about yeah. stuff, about this stuff. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the, the ideal outcome would be that. So I think we can wait till the event to see how your teachers respond to this and if they get excited. Because if they do, I mean, I, we really like to talk about a collaboration architecture where we, it's completely interdisciplinary between enterprise students, technical students, documenters, video people, uh, developing, uh, for us it's about developing real products. Like the, the long-term vision is uh, let's let's create the circular economy or relocalize production. Just I mean, I guess China's a great example right now because uh, that actually may affect our sourcing for, uh, for our kits. But bringing production back to America or back to or starting production in a country w which doesn't have it that's that's our goal and the idea here is that we do some tangible work to get people one trained in collaboration to solve problems that are bigger than ourselves so 
um, if we can get a, some teachers excited and a, or a group of teachers that are really into this, yeah, I guess we can talk after that, but I think the first thing would be to run the first event. We, we can't do much planning without knowing who's going to be at the table. I showed your I showed your your website to a few teachers, and it was mm -hmm. pretty. They were pretty excited about it. So I mm -hmm. mean, I think we have a lot of there's a lot of purchase for this sort of ideas and this sort of process here at our school. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So our next step then would be I'll, I'll send you a draft of the contract, and then we'll do so. We'll plan on you guys say like April first or like between March 16 and April first. You guys advertise, and we'll, then we'll we'll advertise. So basically, in the meantime. Um, yeah, I'll be working on a on an overall announcement. I can send you that with a contract and stuff like that. So in the next few days, that'd be so. great. My I'm re, I'm going to be out of town a lot of next week, but I will do my best. And I will let me just I'll just say it is that let me we'll say April first. Yeah. When I sit down with all my people, I may have to adjust that timeline yeah. as as best I can, just because yeah. I'm I'm kind of making it up here by myself. So, um, and yeah. as things move along, I may have to re readdress that day. Yeah. April, May, June. Um, let's see, April, May, June. At, in April, we still have full three months, so we're pretty good on schedule. Like, if we, uh, even like two months before, that's like, that would still work to to, be, to give people enough time. But yeah, if we can uh, get this up there like three months ahead of time, I mean, we got plenty of time to to get get yeah. this populated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, I think that sounds good. That I think that's all we need to cover. We'll continue on. Um, on email, let me know if you got any questions. I think the contract should spell out a lot of details, and I'll send you as much resource as possible and, and a that'd contact be, to someone you can talk to. Yep. That'd be great. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. So, thank you so much for your time. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. We'll yeah. continue the discussion. Take care. Yeah. Have a good one.